All right, so in this video, we want to start talking about some of the properties of the sine graph. So we determined what the sine graph looks like uh, in an earlier video when we did the animations with the whole unit circle thing and everything like that. So now uh, let's go ahead and redraw the graph here, um, just part of it. I mean, it goes infinitely far in both directions, so of course we can't draw the whole thing. But, uh, so x-axis, y-axis. So we'll just recreate it here with a kind of a rough sketch. Um, so we don't want to, you know, it doesn't really have to look perfect, but try to get as close as we can. So up like that, back down like that, up sort of like that. It could be a little better, but not terrible, I guess. Um, down here like that, up, and back down like that. Okay, so uh, here is the graph of our function y equals sine of x. Okay, and let's label some of these important points here. So again, we determined uh, that this, we know this function looks like this uh, based on what we did in an earlier video. So now we're just going to recreate it here so we can talk about some of the properties. So here's a zero. Uh, this is going to be pi over two. Uh, this guy right here is uh, x equals pi. That's three pi over two. And this right here is uh, two pi. Okay. So uh, what if we go back the other way? Um, then we'll have negative pi over two here. Negative pi over two. Uh, this is negative pi. This is negative 3 pi over 2, and then a negative 2 pi here. And it would keep going infinitely far to the left also. Okay, what about the y coordinate? So um, here is negative 1, okay? and up here uh, we have positive 1. Okay? So positive 1 is the largest value we get, negative 1 is the smallest value we get. Okay? And we kind of knew that from the unit circle, but now it's easier to see um, that's what's happening here. When we look at the graph of this as a function, it's much easier to see that. Okay? So now that we have this uh, in front of us, let's talk about some of the properties here. Okay, so we've talked a lot about um, various properties of trig functions uh, in earlier videos, but now we're going to talk about some more properties that uh, are also kind of related to the graphs. Okay. So um, good ones to start with are domain and range. Uh, those are very important. We haven't talked a whole lot about those yet. Um, okay, so domain. So remember what a domain is uh, of a function. The domain of a function in general is the set of all the x values for which the function is defined. Okay, so your variable might not be called x, but it doesn't matter what we call it. Uh, the point is the domain is the set of all the possible input values you can have. Okay, so in other words, if we say y equals sine of x, what are all the possible values of x? What's uh, everything that we can take a sine of? So what we can do is ask ourselves, well, is there anything that we can't take a sine of? Uh, and the answer is no. Okay, so in other words, for any number you can think of, you can take the sine of it. Okay? So it doesn't matter how far to the right you go, how far to the left you go, for any x value you have here, you can plug it into this function, y equals sine of x, and you'll get a y coordinate back. Okay? So in other words, the domain is all real numbers, which we say like this uh, in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with interval notation, there are some videos here. Um, to, if you want to brush up on that or learn about that, um, that's interval notation here. Okay, so this uh, is just another way of saying all real numbers. So from negative infinity to positive infinity, um, all real numbers. Okay, so um, how about the range? Okay, so just like the domain is the set of all the input values, uh, the range is the set of all the output values. Okay, so what are all the y coordinates? So domain corresponds to x coordinates, range is the uh, y coordinates. So what are all the y coordinates we get from this function? Well, uh, in general, range is sometimes a little bit uh, harder to determine, but for sine, it's not too bad. So what we can do here is look at the smallest y value, negative 1, look at the largest y value, positive 1. Okay, so this is the smallest, this is the largest, so nothing outside of there. What about in between? Well, yeah, we get every y coordinate in between, right? So for any y value that you pick in between negative 1 and 1, you're going to have a corresponding point on the graph. Okay, so for example, if I pick this y value right here, I can go over here and say, oh, here's a corresponding point on the graph. Or if I pick one over here, okay, if I pick this y value down here, I can go this way and say, oh, there's a corresponding point on the graph. Okay. So um, I can actually do that with all of the y values in between negative 1 and 1. As we can see, the graph just goes, it constantly bounces back and forth between negative 1 and 1. Uh, the word for that is oscillate. Oscillate. Okay, so uh, this, graph, um, this graph oscillates between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so since it's oscillating there and it's, it's continuous, you know, there's no holes, no breaks, no jumps, no gaps, nothing like that. Um, it just moves continuously from negative 1 to 1, uh, back and forth between those two. So we do hit every value in between. Okay. 
So um, a lot of talk just to say that we the range is from negative one to one, okay, so like this. And again, that's more interval notation. So we do square brackets here because negative one and one are both included in the range. Uh, so this means negative one is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to one. Okay. So remember, uh, never do square brackets on infinities. Never have square brackets on those. Uh, always do the rounded parentheses on the uh, infinities. So that's just interval notation there. Um, anyway, that's domain and range. There are some other properties to talk about. Um, these are definitely uh, really important here, so we do want to keep those in mind. Um, more about those later. So anyway, um, what else is there to talk about? So we know that this is uh, periodic, right? So we talked about that in an earlier video. Uh, remember, what does that mean? So uh, periodic, uh, so this is 2 pi periodic. Okay, 2 pi periodic. What does that mean to be 2 pi periodic? Well, it means, first of all, this function is periodic, and it has period 2 pi. So in other words, uh, if you go start at any x value, if you go 2 pi units to the right or to the left, um, everything's going to start repeating. Okay, so we saw that in the animation in the earlier video, but when we went from 0 to 2 pi, we had this basic shape here. Then if we go 2 pi to 4 pi, we have that exact same shape. And we actually see it here on this graph. From negative 2 pi to 0, we have this shape. Then if we go 0 to 2 pi, same exact shape, right? So um, every 2 pi units, uh, all the y values start repeating. Okay? And it's uh, pretty easy to see on the graph here. So if we started, let's say, this value of x over here, um, x equals negative pi, let's start over here. If x equals negative pi, uh, the y value is 0. If we go 2 pi units to the right, we'll be over here, where the y value is 0. Okay, so what this periodic property means in terms of the graph is if you start at any value of x, whether it's a nice one like 0 pi over 2 or pi or whatever, or if it's some goofy one like maybe pi over 7 or uh, 17 pi over 32 or something strange like that, um, or just, I don't know, 1.43 radians, um, somewhere around here, uh, if you have something like that, um, then because you have this 2 pi periodic property, if you go 2 pi units to the right or 2 pi units to the left, you're going to have the exact same y coordinate. Okay, so that's true for every value of x. Okay, so just to say that again without all the stuff in between. Um, if you start at any value of x on here, any value of x, go 2 pi units to the right or to the left, uh, you'll be at the exact same y coordinate. Okay? So that's what 2 pi periodic means in terms of the graph. Okay. So that's the periodic property. Um, some other things worth talking about are intercepts. So um, the intercepts here. So x-intercepts. Um, in general, what's an x-intercept in general? Remember, uh, that's sort of like a pre-calculus thing. So in general, uh, an x-intercept, uh, it's a value of x where you're on the x-axis. Okay. So what values of x put us on the x-axis? Well, here negative 2 pi, uh, negative pi, 0, positive pi, positive 2 pi, and then we can keep going. So we can go infinitely far this way or infinitely far this way, and we'll keep getting x-intercepts. So what we could say is uh, dot, 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 comma, what do we have here? Negative 2 pi, uh, negative pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, dot, 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 okay. Okay, so, um, you know, and if we kept going this way, we'd also have 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, and so on and so forth. If we kept going this way, we'd also have negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 5 pi, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, a shorter way of saying this then uh, is, so we have x equals all this stuff here. So maybe we could just say uh, x equals this. So x equals dot, 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 comma. Okay. So x equals dot, 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 all this stuff here. Um, but a shorter way of saying that would be, Let's write this in a different color. Uh, x equals k pi, where uh, k is any integer. k any integer. Okay, so that's how we express um, the x-intercept here. So this is a shorter way of saying that. So what does this mean, k pi, where k is any integer? Well, k, remember integers are like uh, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on and so forth. So um, if we take any integer, multiply it by pi, then we're going to get an x-intercept. Okay, so for example, if k is 1, then we have 1 pi, which is just pi. If k is 2, we have 2 pi, which is uh, here, 2 pi, okay, an x-intercept. If k is uh, 57, then we have 57 pi, <clears throat> which gives us an x-intercept really far out to the right. Okay. Uh, if k is 0, 
Then we have zero pi, which is just the same thing as zero. Okay, zero times pi is zero, so that puts us right here, where we have an x-intercept. Um, what if k is negative two? Then we have negative two pi, which uh, we know is right here, an x-intercept. Okay, so k could be any integer, positive, zero, or negative. Um, and if we multiply that by pi, we'll get an x-intercept. Okay, so a shorter way of saying that, or if we want to say that out in words, it's uh, integer multiples of pi. So if we take any integer, multiply it by pi, that gives us an integer multiple of pi. And those are the x-intercepts of the sine function. Okay, how about the y-intercept? So y-intercepts in general are usually a little bit easier because there's uh, only one of them or none at all, but we can never have more than one for a function. Because okay, remember, for a function, you've got to pass the vertical line test. And if you have more than one y-intercept, then you fail the vertical line test, so you're not a function. Okay, so uh, y-intercept. So just like an x-intercept, that's a point where you're on the x-axis. Uh, a y-intercept is a point where you're on the y-axis. Okay, so what's the y-coordinates um, where we're on the y-axis here? Okay, so uh, the y-coordinate, well, where are we on the y-axis? We're on the y-axis right here, okay, so at 0, comma 0. So the y-coordinate there is 0. Okay, so let's uh, keep the colors consistent. So the y-intercept is y equals 0. Okay, so, or we could say it's a 0, comma 0, um, but Let's just keep it consistent and say y equals 0 is our y-intercept, okay? So there's our y-intercepts, uh, y equals 0, much simpler than the x-intercepts, right? Um, okay, so that's x-intercept, y-intercept. So x equals k pi, where k is any integer. Those are the x-intercepts. Only have one y-intercept, and it's y equals 0. Uh, something else worth talking about, um, two more related concepts. There's uh, maximum and minimum values. So uh, what's the maximum value? We kind of already mentioned it, but the maximum value is 1. Okay, the largest possible thing that this could be is 1. Okay, so the maximum value, uh, max value uh, is y equals 1. Okay, and where does it happen? It happens at uh, x equals what? Okay, so for what values of x do we get a y value of 1? So in other words, for what values of x do we have sine of x equal to 1? Well, we just look at the graph and see there's actually infinitely many of them, right? So he, pi over 2 is one of them. Uh, negative 3 pi over 2 is another one. We can keep going infinitely far to the left and get more, or infinitely far to the right and get more that way. So if we were to keep extending this, uh, so pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, the next one would be 5 pi over 2. So 5 pi over 2 would actually be another one, okay? And then uh, 9 pi over 2 would be another one after that, and so on and so forth. So um, what we could say is dot, let's uh, fill that in here. So at x equals uh, dot, dot, dot. Um, if we just look at the graph here, what do we have? Negative 3 pi over 2. Um, positive pi over 2. Uh, what's next? So pi over 2, and then after that was 5 pi over 2, even though it's not really labeled on the graph, but 5 pi over 2 would be the next one if we extended this and kept going. Uh, 5 pi over 2, okay. comma, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So um, this is the maximum value. It's y equals 1, and it happens at these x values. Okay. So um, it is possible to describe these like we did over here, but let's not worry too much about that, because um, these actually these are worth pointing out, but they're not really... Um, important enough to worry about describing more shortly like this. Okay. All right, but anyway, um, those are max values. What about min values? So the min value uh, is, so we already talked about it before, and we can see on the graph, uh, the minimum value is negative 1, right? y equals negative 1 is the smallest possible value of y we can get. So is y equals negative 1, where does it happen? Happens at... Uh, x equals what? Okay, so uh, just like we did with the max values, we go back to the graph and look and sort of establish that pattern. So y equals negative 1 here at negative pi over 2 and uh, positive 3 pi over 2. Okay, and if we kept going, uh, it would be 7 pi over 2 would be the next one, then 11 pi over 2. Okay, so um, how are we getting that pattern? So we didn't really talk about it, but here, what's the number on top that's being multiplied by pi? Negative 3. That's 1. That's 5. So at negative 3, you add 4, you get 1. If you take 1, you add 4, you get 5. So that's kind of the pattern here. So if you take 5, you add 4, you get 9. So the next one would be 9 pi over 2. Add 4 to that, you get 13. So 13 pi over 2 would be the next 
uh, 17 pi over 2 after that. Okay? So that's sort of the pattern that's being followed here. Okay? Um, and likewise, of course, it's going to happen the same in the negative direction. So, you know, subtract 4 to go to the left. So uh, 1 pi over 2, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Uh, negative 3 pi over 2, if you take negative 3, subtract 4, you get uh, negative 7. Okay, so negative 7 pi over 2 would be the next one this way. And then if we want to keep going, uh, negative 11 pi over 2 okay, would be the next one that way. Okay. So actually the exact same thing is happening, uh, the exact same pattern is happening here with the minimum values, okay, just with, uh, with different values. Okay. So again, uh, getting back to the minimums, um, negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, uh, 7 pi over 2, 11 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. So x equals dot dot dot, negative pi over 2, uh, positive 3 pi over 2. Okay, the next one, it's not pictured on the graph, but the next one, so here, 5 pi over 2, uh, 3 pi, and then down here would be 7 pi over 2. So when x is 7 pi over 2, that's the next one. And we can say comma dot dot dot. But again, this pattern of uh, we're adding 4 okay, to the number on top. So uh, negative 1 pi over 2. So it's like negative 1 on top. Add 4, you get 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. So 11 pi over 2 would be the next one. 11 plus 4 is 15. So 15 pi over 2 comes after that. Um, and so on and so forth. Okay. So that would just keep going. Um, let's get rid of this. And of course, the same thing would happen in the uh, negative direction, right? So negative 1, subtract 4, you get negative 5. So negative 5 pi over 2 would be the next one in the negative direction. Um, then after that would be negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9, so negative 9 pi over 2, and so on and so forth. So see, this pattern keeps continuing uh, infinitely far to the left and to the right. Okay? So that's how we find where the minimum values occur. So again, the minimum value is y equals negative 1, and it happens at x equals these values here. The maximum value is y equals 1, and it happens at x equals these values here. Okay? So that's um, some properties of the uh, sine graph. I guess one more worth mentioning is, um, remember we talked about even-odd properties? So this is an odd function. So odd, uh, odd function. So remember what it means to be an odd function? So uh, sine, sine is an odd function. So uh, what does that mean? So remember that means that uh, sine, let's use a different color here, means sine of uh, negative x equals negative sine of x, right? So that's one way of expressing uh, this odd function property here. But what does that mean in terms of the graph? It means the graph is symmetric over the origin. Okay, so remember symmetric over the origin means reflect over y and then reflect over x, you'll get the same thing back. So it's kind of hard to see like this, but uh, if we just look at a piece maybe. So let's look at this piece from uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so if we just take this piece up here, okay, just take that little piece up here in the first quadrant, reflect over y, and then reflect over x. Okay, reflect over the y-axis, reflect it over the x-axis. It's going to look exactly like this piece down here. Okay? So actually, let's extend it out to negative pi to pi. So if we go from negative pi to pi, uh, take this piece up here, okay, take this piece up here, reflect it over the y-axis, and then reflect it over the x-axis, um, you're going to get exactly this piece over here. Okay? So that's just kind of what it means to be symmetric over the origin. Um, and the graph of the sine function is symmetric over the origin because it is an odd function. So, um, and it's a property that we talked about before and we've used before to evaluate uh, the sine function at various x values. But now we're uh, looking at it again in terms of the graph. Okay? So remember, odd functions are symmetric over the origin and they have this algebraic property here. That's one way of expressing it anyway. Okay? So that's uh, some properties of the graph of the sine function. And coming up next, uh, some corresponding properties for the cosine graph.